Good afternoon, people. We have a one of these Ultrabook AC with the EMMC hard drive storage, and uh, it's an absolute bollocks. So uh, I've just received the uh, 32 gig of NAN from China so let's replace this and see what happens but before doing so I would like to sort of quickly show you what the symptom of the device uh, the laptop is so let's power it on hopefully there's enough charge on the battery hopefully I said I did say hopefully let me grab an AC charger hopefully it didn't work this time around unfortunately because the battery seems to be totally dead so let's power this little Laptop on. Okay, let's uh, wait for a second, and I will power it on. The symptom is that you won't find the drive; it just won't find anything. So let's sort of stay focused on that. See where it says "No bootable device." Okay, so when you go on the BIOS, sorry, the wrong button. Let's make sure it is F two. Okay, whatever it is. Okay. So when you, when you go onto the BIOS, you just can't see anything there. There's no details about the uh, hard drive. It says none. So you can see the EMC serial number, blah, blah, blah. Model number. It's, it's not finding anything, basically. There's these there's HDD 00. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of try and replace the EMC hard drive and see what happens, basically. So let's power this off. I hope this is not like the ones there. This is the first one I'm doing actually, so you will have to excuse me for any I like this screwdriver. So let's put this back. Okay. What I'm going to do is. jumping from one job to another so let's stay focused on this now it's going to be tricky because I've got multiple items on the bench as I speak and the difficulties when you're doing all everything all by yourself it can get a bit tricky oops I've left one screw out probably grab this sorry I didn't see that almost snapped the panel off Okay, let's put down the floor, that's the drive, let's crack on with it, the battery was disconnected, ah, oh, ah, the reason why it didn't fire up without the uh, thing was that I, initially when I took it apart, I disconnected the battery, that's the reason why, okay, so now let's unplug these cables, get rid of all that, let me grab my pair of tweezers, Could be an utter waste of time as i said it's the first time i'm replacing an em emmc storage chip so it could be an utter waste of time i won't know but let's i thought let's share this with you guys and see what happens fingers crossed that i'm not going to waste my time and i just hope that it's not similar to the phone repairs where you've got a bloody copy data from the uh, like the iPhones where you've got to copy data from the existing uh, NAND. Just hope that that's not the case. If something is stuck. Okay, so there we go. Let's put this on the ground. This is the chip. 
So I'm going to take that off. Before doing so, I will be I'll be applying some uh, Captain tape around it. It's a particular reason why. In fact, no, I'll apply some foil tape just so that when I line it back up, it's lined up properly. Not the fact that I'm stupid, but I prefer to do it that way. In fact, no, not not really, because there's there's a box there. That's okay. That's okay. I don't need to do that. It's absolutely fine. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of the orientation of the chip. It should be the. Just about, you can see a little dot on the edge of the thingy, and there's a dot here. Fair enough, I'm, I, I sort of, sort of, I'm all right with it, but um, still think it's a good idea to sort of uh, take a picture. There's nothing wrong taking a picture. Yeah, well, what I've decided, I'm, I'm still going to wrap it around because I don't want to expose any unnecessary heat around this uh, board. There's various other components around here. And it'd be nice not to sort of expose any heat onto those components while sort of applying heat. I will be sort of uh, using, let me see, yeah, I'll probably be taking off the uh, bottom uh, heat sink. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to do it professionally, okay? So that's masked off quite nicely. I'm going to take this off because I will need to sort of use a... Uh, uh, a bottom heater, so just to try and make things a little bit easy. That's the Intel CPU. Where is the NAN? NAN is here, about there. So I'm going to cover this area up with Captain tape. So that I'm going to just make sure the NAN, NAN is here. So. I'm going to cover this connector. It's plastic, so I don't want it damaging. I will also apply a bit of a on this. Are you in view? Yes, of course you're in view. That's brilliant. Um, what next? I'll give this CPU a quick clean because I would like to cover that up as well. Um, and possibly the RAM, but I can't see that there's enough heat going onto the RAM, so because the hot plate's going to be further that way. But hence, I'd still take the uh, I'd still do whatever means necessary to avoid any risks. Okay, so there's nothing wrong putting a layer of freaking canton tape over that. Okay, that's done, and then finally the CPU. I remember buying Captain tapes from China, and I bought a huge amount of various sizes. Um, and it's, it's been years since I last bought them, um, and I'm still going through, surprisingly enough. Okay, so that's been done. That's done. Let's throw this in the bin. Clear up the bench. Get the uh, bottom heater, get some clocks, put some gloves on, and uh, crack on with the work. <coughs> okay, that's my bottom heater. I do have an electric plug somewhere here which I can use, hopefully, if I can find it, that is. If not, then I'll probably end up kicking myself in the back because I'll have to dig out the wires. I do see the wire. I do see it somewhere. Yep. Hip, hip. Hooray. Okay. Do I have power on that? I don't know. Let's, uh, let's plug it in and find out. No, there's no power. Yes, the switch is on, so I've got to figure out. Yep, yeah, okay, beautiful. 
Might just warm this up. Let's put it to about four. My targeted area is this. Okay, probably, probably keep it like this. I'll have to put the fume extractor on because the deflux. Okay. And then obviously the soldering station will need to be put in place. So let me change the tip on that because obviously I need to clean the pads. But before getting too excited and turning everything on, I did not check the NAND chip what's been sent to me from China. So let's get that thing out first and check it, make sure that it is the right one what they sent me. There's lots of parts in this pack that have come from China that at least I need to sort of uh, check and uh, crack on with the work okay very nicely packaged hope it is the right one the trouble this is a bit of an awareness advice that when you buy stuff off Aliexpress <laughs> don't expect that the resolution team to be in your favor they'll never be in your favor I had some BGA chip been sent over to me which were wrong I put a charge back and uh, they were asking me to send it back. Quite obviously, that was the fault of the seller. I said, yes, I'll send it back, but it's costing me nearly 10 pound to send something back that's only 22 pound. So I've given them all the evidences what was required to go in my favor, but the stupid bastards did not kept on asking for evidence and I, and, and I cut more evidence and I thought what more evidence is for me to, so, to pr provide you with so in the end I lost the dispute and it went into the favour of the seller so Aliexpress go and fuck yourself you fucking morons and And I'm not freaking whinging about. It's, I do understand it's a small amount, but that's beside the point. The point is about principle, and and that's what what it matters, right? What I'm doing now is I'm just checking the two nan chip basically, and making a comparison as to if it is the right one. Yes, it is. Um, H26 M64208 e EMR, um, and that is exactly what I have on the top here. So yes, I'm quite happy with this NAND chip. What I'm going to do, one thing, one thing just so that you are aware, is, let me look for a captain tape. I'm going to cover the face of this, uh, uh, top part of this NAND chip with a bit of a captain tape. Just so that the heat doesn't damage the IC itself in any way when I re-sold it back on. Tiny, tiny solder balls. Absolutely friggin' tiny. Right, let's find a small pair of scissors because I need to go around the edges and chop the edges off quite... Yep. Okay, so quite satisfied with that. If I can get a clean cut at the edges, that would be brilliant. That to me, everything matters. It's attention to detail that matters to me. So, uh, of course, it would bother me. So something like that would definitely bother me. I'm just going to inspect the solder joints on the. Uh, Thingy. And there's some debris on the uh, bottom of the uh, flipping neck. Those are tiny solder balls, tiny, tiny solder balls. Flipping neck. Right, well, first thing to do is preheat this board, get my um, move me microscope away, get this. That's gonna get it's gonna get noisy now, guys. 
because I'm going to turn on my neck cowl. HCT900. The beauty of it is that the handpiece is very ergonomic, very small, and I bought these nozzles from China, the Ben nozzles, and uh, they seems to be working like magic. Right, okay, what's next? Before touching the box, flux. Bring it over here. Let's just make sure that it's just about hovering over that. Let the board preheat. I'm going to grab my pair of glasses because I am a bit blind now at the moment. I'm back. Okay. Right, let's put a bit of flux on. Fill this tube back up. So I buy tubs of uh, flux and uh, make sure it's hot. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Right. Let's go in for the kill. And let's find a pair of tweezers. What's up into the tweezers? Is there so It's off completely. Okay. That's off. That's off. Okay. Let's chuck it in there. Let's clean those pads out. Reduce the temperature. Reduce the temperature on the hot air station. Just leave it to about 100 degrees. I'm going to leave that about 4. Let's clean it. Clean the tip before sort of go cleaning the pads. So these are tip cleaners I'm using. Get rid of any contamination on the actual tip itself. The pad on the uh, soldering iron sponge. I use distilled water just so that it doesn't. It helps preventing. Uh, the life of the sponge itself. Usually when you water, use tap water it tends to get a bit gunky and uh, 
the sponge doesn't last that long. So what I'm going to do now is let me zoom in to see what I'm see what I'm doing. In fact, let's sort of raise this a little bit. I guess possible and then give you a down view of what's going on. Okay, so you can camcorders camcorder is quite far. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a pass Ideally, I'd prefer to be under the microscope, um, and maybe I should be, but then I can't switch the microscope light on because I don't. I'm going to take this off the board, leave the hot plate running, put the microscope in place, and I need to make sure that I'm not running, I'm not lifting any pads or anything like that, so. It's very important that I don't do this. Uh, are you getting all that? Maybe not. Okay, I think you are now. Let's uh, clean those pads. Apply a bit more flux here so it'll be easy to sort of uh, flow this over and get them onto the braid. and uh, oh. right that'll, that'll be more than enough that right? because I don't want to be doing it more than I should okay I'm quite sort of happy with that let me just make sure that the fumes off the tip of the There's a lot of fume coming out of this plate. That's it. Right, let's give it a quick clean. Put it back in this thingy. Right, give this a clean. It's a pity that I don't have a microscope where I can actually take screen uh, capture of what I'm doing. It would be absolutely awesome. Now the important thing to remember is not to put too much flux when you're putting this chip back on because it will quite easily lift the uh, chip off and let it sort of uh, flow and that's not, that's not something what we want. So, so the way to deal with this is it's going to be a tiny amount of solder tape, flux, and then just massage it in. Once it's in place, you can then go ahead and you're welcome to reflow the chip if you want to with a, with a bit more flux. But beside that, I would not recommend you sort of Put in plenty of flux underneath it unless you've got a very steady hand where you can hold these chips in place. It's a definite no no. What I'm doing is I'm just spreading this older flux evenly. Ok, 
okay and then I'm going to go in for the hill just make sure that the chip is in the right oops the right orientation which was I did put a little dot in there yep okay and just hope for the best that it doesn't fucking jump Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to put this underneath it. Okay, and then I'm going to leave my microscope. I'll have to work under my microscope because I need to see if the chip lifts or moves. So let me sort of get you. Can I get you any closer than that? Okay, that's as clearer and closest you're going to get. Okay, let me bump up the temperature of the hot plate. So the lower heat is going to be quite high because I don't want it, I want to expose very little uh, heat to the uh, upper part of the chip itself because they are very sensitive. This too, let's just wait for the chip and the board temperature to rise. Oops, make sure it's in the centre as well. Yeah, that's me. Yep, that's in the right centre. Positioning this to the best of my ability. Obviously, surface tension will put it back, but my hands are not very steady at the moment. For that reason, I've got to make sure that the board, uh, the, the piece, the actual man flash is to the nearest possible. Right, okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in for the kill. I'm not quite happy with the uh, soldering, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply. This is what I said if you want to reflow the chip again, do it, no problem. And uh, make sure you apply sufficient. Amount of flux. I think I'm quite happy with that level of flux, but let's sort of uh, go in and I'll have to nudge the chip. Okay, now the, whew, that's, the heat is just dissipating onto my hands with the pair of gloves so the tweezers are not long enough for me to do that. Whew, that, that hurts. Even the gloves on. It's 
so let me sort of help myself by picking two. Quite satisfied with that. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't want anything dropping, not now. Okay. Turn that off, I'm going to flake that off, give it a few minutes, cool off, turn all the equipment off. No need for all that, let the board cool down a little bit. And then I'll inspect the board and uh, just take it from there really. So uh, let me move this, let this cool down all by itself. It doesn't switch off for a good couple of minutes until the ceramic element has dropped its temperature. I just need to move this wire out of sight so it's not catching on the hot plate. Okay, and then while the board is warm, let's move all these uh, foil because it's a lot easier to get rid of. Otherwise, it's a pain on the ass and it tends to leave a lot of uh, residue. Um, Make sure that nothing's coming off. I'll keep them for now. Expose them in a bit. And then hopefully, as I said, I've not done this before. It's the first time. Uh, to be quite honest with you, I never bothered. It's not the fact that I don't want to do it. It's just I couldn't be... I didn't think it was worthwhile doing this. Because of what the cost of the laptops, these uh, Ultrabooks are. I just didn't think it's viable for me to sort of even get involved with this level of work basically but when you've got customers and uh, retailers nagging you to do this do that then uh, why not what's wrong uh, I'll probably go with my toothbrush because I'm not quite happy with this so not well I don't use it for me brushing my teeth quite obviously but I'm just gonna give you a quick whoosh you know, the funny thing is nothing cleans as good as a uh, truth brush does, so... And the tip, thing to remember with electronic repairs is that these various voltage input, output, data line input, output, so the point, you know, when you, when you do install a fresh component on a board, let it sort of, let it sort of, let the laptop switch on and off several times. Well, uh, for, for it to establish the uh, data lines and whatever, all the rest of the, uh, and, and for, it, for it to communicate with the SMCs and uh, CPU, the RAM and everything else. Because quite recently I did a repair on a HP 15 series motherboard and uh, I replaced the uh, battery charging IC because that was the problem. And it's fixed the problem, but the issue was that uh, at first it wouldn't charge the battery. Although that replacing the IC, it just wouldn't. So on a several restart, then it started sort of working fully. So just for your knowledge, remember that don't rush and don't panic. Just just hang fire and reboot the system several times. I've got school room to do, snooze. So I've got to hurry up. Let me see if I can see this, the board, the solder balls. No, it's too friggin' thin. Absolutely no fucking chance. Right, okay, so, right, I'm gonna take my chances. As I said before, this hasn't been done. I've not done this before, so, first time. I am gonna keep, I'm not being a tight ass, but I'm gonna keep those captain tape because they're not contaminated with flux. And surely I can reuse them on another job and charge customer more money. It's gone. You know, I, I, I don't like to do, I don't like doing jobs for retailers because uh, they're eating into your profit margin. 
you do, you do, do, you're doing most of the work and they're eating into the profit margin. I don't like dealing with retailers. Um, so sometimes you've got to do them because some of them are your friend or my friends and uh, or even being friends. Business is a business, but uh, for some of them, it's business as usual. But for me, I do give them that extra bit of privilege of uh, nice human, but sometimes they can start taking the fucking piss. So that's that's a good thermal paste what I've been using, I've just used actually. So, uh, okay, so let's put this back. Heat spreader back and come on. I'm rushing because uh, what I don't want to do is stop the video uh, because I've got, I've got to leave for something else. So I am a little bit rushed off my feet at the moment, in all honesty but also I would like to sort of complete this before sort of going and, and uh, see if this been if it has been worthwhile my time just pray to god that it's not one of those where like the iPhones you've got to fucking copy the uh, files over Okay, that's in, that's in this place. That's going to be the touchpad. That's your keyboard. So let's get this in. Okay. Okay. Wi-Fi cable, CMOS battery, oops, this one's on something there that's gone underneath. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. No, you can't see what I'm doing, you bloody f me as a moron, right? Sorry guys, I didn't even pay attention to that actually. My humble apologies. My humble apologies, that, that's not been captured, captured on the uh, video. Okay, let's put that in. I'm not going to bother with the battery now. Let's sort of... Uh, battery seems to be loose. Is it going to fall off and break? I'm wrap a bit of tape over that so that it doesn't fall off and break. It cost me more for repair. <coughs> In fact, okay, what else is going to happen? It's either going to work or it's not going to work. Right, let's sort of uh, just make sure that these are in place. Everything else is okay. Ooh. Snooze, lad. Right, I'll put the back on. Just so that the battery don't fall off. And then I'm gonna turn the laptop on. I've got a blue light. Let's see what happens on the screen. It might work, it might not work. If it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. Hmm, that's interesting. I need to charge it. I'm asking for me to turn the charging. Done. Okay, so let's see what's going on. Right, so let's go into the BIOS. See if it recognizes the drive. 
no, so it's not an EMMC error. Okay, because it can't see the fucking model of the capacity, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to load Windows 10 and see what the issue is. And anybody that can help me here, most welcome. Because we live and learn every day. It's not like I'm, I'm an expert in this field. So any suggestions as to where I'm going wrong would be uh, much appreciated. But in terms of, uh, let's let me make sure that I can uh, um, enable that. Recovery, did it, did it, existing time, 19. and see what's happening. I'm going to have to sort of... Uh... Mm -hmm. So there's got to be an issue somewhere else if this has a resolved issue. Okay, let's sort of... Uh... We'll go for 64-bit, we'll go for 64-bit and see what happens. Mm. Let this load. So it's, it's a bit a bit of a pity that the repair hasn't been successful. But it's not recognised that they have drives, so there's something else. I probably have to look at this schematic. Probably have to look at the schematic and uh, find out if those voltages, uh, if the circuit seems to be functioning properly. I have another uh, one of these uh, laptop here. I think it's one of the HP HP with the EM 32 GB of EMMC memory, and that's got the same problem. So it might be worthwhile sort of spending a bit of time and trying to sort of figure out what's going on here. See if it finds. Oh, guess what? <laughs> okay, it's detected the hard drive there. But let's see if it would let me format it, because that's an interesting one. That. Let's see if it would. Because on previously, I remember trying reinstalling the Windows and it wouldn't let me. Oh! Success! Success and success. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray. Right, well done. Congratulations. This is this. It's done it. So it was this bloody shitty. I, I do understand, as I say to you, I am a little bit excited. Because that's money in my pocket going in. Um, so I will be excited. Um, yes, it's done it. Excellent. So here we are. When you've got an EMMC memory related issue, all you need is just to replace a NAND flash. I did have an option for 64 gig, but again, I wasn't so sure whether if this would be successful. This is not my laptop, it's customer's laptop, so I will only do the repair like for like, because I'm only going to get l the amount of money what I've quoted. The 64 GB NAND was almost double the cost. 
So uh, I've, I've decided to stick to 32, but the HP laptop I have here for mine, which is this one, the uh, I don't know HP whatever it is, it's called uh, the Stream, HP Stream that one. That's got exactly the same problem. Oops. Um, and I'm going to sort of uh, sort it out, hopefully. And I broke the laptop crown as well. Well done, excellent. Let's see what I've broken off. Have I broken it or it's just come off all by itself? Let's have a look. Yeah, I've broken it. I've broken the fucking thing. Right, okay, so I'll sort it out. No problem. That's no probs. That's no probs. I'll probably have to. Right, we're on 7% of the Windows installation. Let me remove the, move this T um, and uh, sort of. See if I can patch this fuck up for damaging. Which I shouldn't have. That was my fault, that. That was my fault. Oh, the fucking flimsy little things as well, innit? So. The owner of the laptop who's actually left this with me, he, he wanted me to throw it away, so I said, okay, I'll make some use out of it. Right, we're on the 17% of Windows installation. Let me sort of keep you focused on that. So, I would like the Windows to ins complete its installation, um, if possible. can be used on anything and everything so if you've got a nagging wife while she's asleep just put a bit of this over her lips and then that'll stop her from nagging by the way that was just a joke I can't I'm not going to take any responsibility of you. this this is at your own discretion Right, okay, let me sort of lift this before it fucking... Ah, it's just a pain on the fucking house. Right, we're on 53% of Windows installation. clip and get a pair of right what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a lot more glue than that because I'm not really satisfied. 69% on Windows installation. Gonna stack a lot of glue because what I don't want is this hinge to come off basically. So, Jesus Christ, man. It's three o'clock and I've got to be out by f another five minutes, roughly. Maybe push come to shove ten minutes. Sorry guys, the video's taking a bit longer. I'm just trying to prove... Oh, yes, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm obstructing the, uh, in, the Windsor, Windows installation. Just for now, because I just need to get this out of the way. Just patching this... Uh, laptop off just so you can see what I'm doing okay 
so uh, that glue is quite fucking sticky but right let me get a clamp whoops and I'm gonna get this clamp to hold this in place leave it for about 48 hours so it's got it it's got to be left somewhere and to be cured uh, with the successful repair what I'm going to do is I'm going to order another man chip for the the other for this this laptop the HP uh, stream and uh, deal with that okay so what I found it quite interesting is how come it didn't show anything on the BIOS and it could be the fact that uh, what I mentioned to you before that you've got to uh, And I can assure you that it wasn't an operating system issue because I've already tested that. When it comes to the Windows installation side of it, there was no hard drive, it wasn't detecting anything. There was absolutely nothing there, it was blank. So what I initially did, which I didn't point out to yourself, is that I actually did a reflow on that chip just to see if there was a drive sold related issue or anything else. And uh, it was quite obvious that that wasn't the case because after reflowing I had exactly the same problem. So then I decided, right, okay, I'm going to go and order a NAND chip and uh, take it from there. And uh, yes, it's, it's, I believe it's done it. So the only reason I'm running this is just to make sure that it boots to Windows. And it, once it boots to Windows, I am fairly satisfied that the uh, repair attempt has been quite successful. And I can crack on with going ahead installing the uh, okay well it's asking to restart so we'll restart this I'm going to remove this because there's no need for this to be on let's see if I'm getting yep Windows installation is carrying on superb magic right got to answer this phone let me see who this character is private number Okay, that. Do I answer that, or do I not? Let's see who this is. Hello. Hello. So no answer. What a fucking joke, man. Whew. Finish my tea. Leave the camera rolling a little bit for a couple more minutes. pretty shortly so I'm in a bit of a rush guys um, it is getting 
things ready so we're gonna have to sort of go off the assumption that uh, everything's okay but so you'll have to trust my judgment I may do a second video on this after the repair so I'll stop this repair video now the fuck is all that crap something on my feet Crap on my carpet. Phone's ringing. I'm about to fucking go outside, sort a few things out, and now everybody's sort of. I'm the most wanted man on the face of the planet now. Thankfully, that's come off. When I said crap, I don't mean crap, it was a stain. Right, okay. Well, I think I've given you enough proof to validate the fact that the repair has been successful. It is loaded into Windows. There we go. This is, I've got to go now. Hi there. Uh, I'm let me. And I'm here to help. Of course, let's just, let's just crap. Let's just quickly. Sign in here. The touch of I've got another a couple of more minutes. Use your voice or Come on. keyboard along the way. And Hurry if you'd up. like me to stay quiet, just select the little microphone icon towards the bottom of your screen. Yep, yeah, I've done that. No, that's the If volume. you need an assistant. Come on. No, I like it, Cortana. Voice mode on. Let's go, let's go. Come on, hurry up. Come. Your region is set to United Kingdom. Yes, please. <clears throat> Your keyboard is set to. One of the Do you critical. Also type with another keyboard layout. One of the critical factor why I reflowed the chip again is that sometime on the initial now, reflow. Now let's get um, you connected to a network. That way you can get updates, apps, and now type your credentials. Mission accomplished. You're all linked up. Okay, so one of the reasons why I, I put now very little flux is that when you put too much flux and the chip is so small and light, it, the, flo the, the, the tension under the chip, that whilst the flux is activating, it'll just lift it up so it won't be lined up in its place. Now, what so what you want to do is you want to use very little flux and then and then if you feel, you know, and, and then I'd, I'd recommend just rerun another reflow basically uh, with plenty of flux. So once the solder balls are joined and the chip is in its place, the surface tension uh, will retain the chip in its place even after putting plenty of flux on the second reflow. The chip, chip won't move or won't sort of go out of place basically. So that's one of the particular reasons why I did what I did on my uh, on the, the way I carried out this uh, chip. Uh, now, Type your email address or replacement. Phone right, okay. Let's sort of. Uh... Type what you want to name your account. Let me... Okay. Now type. A... I just want to go into the system management and see if it if it shows up hey, a 32 look, gig of. That's me, Cortana. Find that. Windows can save your spot in no, apps. thank you. It's a bit of a pain on the Let's arse, you know. set things up the way you like. Now, choose if you want... And if you ever lose your device. Next, choose whether... I don't want to send any information, but it won't let me. And if you want to help improve me. language record... If you want tips, off... Finally, for these settings, choose whether... Jesus Christ, man. I'm a little impatient at the moment because I've got to run along. Almost done now. Come on, hurry up. We just need to get a few more things polished oh, up for you, see. and on. Windows will be all yours. Looking forward to helping out. Come on. Right, well, I'm going to have to leave this matter here because, as I said, I'll probably do a follow-up video on, on the EMMC memory replacement, but... How long has it been now? Almost an hour now. Well, that's not too bad considering the uh, installation of the windows itself. Mm 
found it. Sorry, I've got it here. Still waiting. I don't like editing the videos and things like that, but it's absolute bollocks. This is not just absolute bollocks, right? Okay, it's done it. Okay, beautiful. Let's sort of find the control panel. Control panel. Control panel, yep. Because as it is, these these bloody things are pretty useless anyway. Um, so yep, this hard drive is detected. There's 17.8 gigabytes free space left. Let me see if I can zoom in and show you what's going on. Okay, that's the screen. And uh, under device manager what do I get under hard disk drive yep it's Hynix uh, HBG4A2 so it's recognizing that fine um, and my system I don't think that's any relevant but I'll just sort of quickly see what's going on 4G VR RAM install 64-bit window system activated yep so that's all um, yep, hard drive has been recognised. Uh, it was quite strange why it didn't recognise anything on the uh, BIOS, but that's all wonderful. The, that was a successful repair, so that's how you sort of sort out EMMC uh, hard drive issues basically. Anyway, take care, bye for now.